Want to learn how to produce a beat, clap track or song in FL Studio? Then this tutorial is for you. This tutorial series gives you a quick and easy introduction to FL Studio 21 from ImageLine. My name is Thomas Foster, I'm a music producer from Salzburg and if you give me 15 minutes of your time, I promise you will be able to produce your first beat. Good to have you here, have fun! This is FL Studio. And in the very beginning I would like to show you the most important button in this software. And this is the play button. If you click it one time, you hear the software FL Studio is playing. And here's the stop button, so here we can stop it, right? Play, stop. Just that simple. And there's a much easier way to do this. You can do it with your space key on the keyboard. First time you click it, it's play. And the second time you click it, it's stop, right? Play, stop, play, stop, or just with the space key, very easy. And you should hear if this button here is selected, that's the metronome button, then you should hear the metronome, this clicking here, right? The, the one, two, three, four, yeah, you can, click it away or you can make it active. So if it's orange, it's active, then you should hear it. If you don't hear this, maybe you have to put up your speakers, put on your headphones, or you have to change the setting of audio in FL Studio to choose your audio card. So for this, you go here where it says FL Studio to preferences. And here you go to the uh, number two audio and here you can choose your audio card and then it should work uh, and if you hear the metronome we are able to continue. We hear the metronome with 130 beats per minute. Why do I know this? Because we see here the tempo. What means 130 beats per minute? That means that if I would count exactly one minute long uh, the beats that I hear, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I would do this for exactly one minute, then I would count exactly 130 because it's 130 beats per minute. Very easy to understand, right? But uh, we can change the tempo. Um, and which tempo we have to choose depends on the genre of music you want to produce. So let's say you want to produce a hip-hop track, then maybe 90 BPM is a good tempo. This would be also a nice tempo for a pop ballad. If you would make a pop song that is more medium, maybe 100, 120 uh, 100 to 120 is a good tempo. If you want to make dance music like uh, EDM, uh, something around 125 could be nice. House music is very often like 128. Uh, techno is very often 138. Uh, dubstep very often 140 beats per minute. Uh, drum and bass 160 uh, and you can go up to yes you can go up to 300 bpm if you would like to produce speed metal alrighty but in the moment i think we stay with a tempo that is good for dance music like 123 bpm right let's listen to this uh, this is a nice David Guetta track. This is wonderful. Okay, let's do this. To produce a beat, to, to create a first beat, we need the channel rack. How do we open the channel rack? This is here the button number three where it says view the channel rack. Why do I know what is the name of this button? Hmm, there's a little trick I can use because I have here the information box. And wherever I place the mouse, let's say here, it says in the information box, play. If I place it here, it says stop. Here, record. Here, we could re record something. Here, the tempo, the metronome, and so on and so on. And here, um, 
view the playlist, right? The, the big window here that we uh, will talk about in another tutorial is the playlist. And uh, here's the piano roll. And here is the channel rack. And that's what we need right now, the channel rack. Okay. So we have here four sounds, the kick, the clap, the hi-hat and the snare, the most four important sounds to produce a dance track, right? A dance beat, sorry. And to add a snare drum, for example, I have simply to click one of these 16 buttons. Why are they 16 buttons? Because we have 16 sixteenth within a bar. Right? Um, so if I click here, I have uh, set a snare drum on the first beat of my bar. All right. And I could hear a second one. And simply I can click as often as I want. I even can click and hold down the mouse to. Uh, while I move the mouse, so I hold down the mouse and move the mouse so I can make a lot of um, clicks, right? And to erase a click, uh, you can use the right mouse or if this does not work, you can try to use the command or the control key. Then you can erase them also by clicking and while you hold down the mouse, moving the mouse. So I would say uh, you should go in play mode. Maybe we don't need the metronome because uh, we don't play live. We add steps for this. We don't need the metronome. And then you just have fun and set some steps and see, uh, set some steps, uh, some snares, some hi-hats, some kicks to create a beat. Maybe you hold, uh, you stop the tutorial and have a little fun. So, after you did this, uh, please uh, use the control or the, the, the right mouse or the control uh, or command key to erase all the clicks again. Okay, now we want to make a special beat, a typical dance beat. For this, we set the kick four to the floor. What means four to the floor? That means we set a kick on every first kick color on every every beat and that's the first 16th here of one color so uh, the first of the gray area the first of the red area gray red here so this are the four beats the four fourth of a bar one two three four clap and snare we set on two and four means on the second kick on the same place where the second kick is, uh, means the first of the red area, and again the first of the red area, that's how a musician would say it, on two and four. Wonderful. And the hi-hat, we set on the off beats. The off beats are exactly the beats between the kicks, so uh, it's the third sixteenth. So one, two, three, this one here, also in the red area, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. So the off beats always between the beats. That's why we call it the off beats, right? This already could be your first dance beat. Cool, huh? Sounds like David Gather. Maybe not the perfect sounds. We would need at least another kick, but I like it. It's pretty cool. So, but maybe we can make the hi-hat a little bit more interesting. So why don't we set all 16 hi-hats simply like this. So, but I want to add a little bit more of a groove, a little bit of a swing, a shuffle. But before I show you this uh, feature, I have to tell you there are different versions of uh, FL Studio, right? There is the Fruity, the producer, the signature. And not all versions have all features. So I'm not sure which feature is in which version. Maybe you don't have this slider here. 
uh, or you don't have this menu here that I will show you a little bit later. So if it's not working, then maybe that's the reason because you have a smaller version of FL Studio. So don't worry, you don't need everything I'll show you, but um, yeah, if you can do it, just look to it and I'll continue with the next feature within some seconds. Okay, uh, that's the main swing. So what is the main swing doing? Listen to it and try to understand what it's doing. It's placing every second 16 a little later. Yeah? It's playing it a little offbeat, a little bit too late. But every second 16th, that would be this one here, right? That would be this one here, and this one, and this one, and so on. We hear the effect much more in detail if I go to a very slow tempo like 60 BP BPM. Uh, and now listen again. That's straight. So if you produce techno, then a shovel is not very often in techno. You would produce it more straight with the main string zero. But if you would make, for example, house music, there is very often a little swing, or I would call it shuffle, but it's basically the same, swing or shuffle. So let's add something like 25% to make it a little bit more interesting. And we go back to our tempo of 123. Okay. And now we want to make it even more interesting. And for this, we click here on the graphic editor. Again, why do I know that it's a graphic editor? Because it tells me here in the information box when I'm moving the mouse here, right? Okay, let's open this. And now we have here some features. And we see always the selected sound. So if I want to see the kick, I just have to activate the uh, kick. You see that it's green here that tells me it's selected and now I can see it here. Okay. And now I want to see the hi-hat. And yes, we have different features. Let's start with the note. With the note, the most of the time what the note, a higher note is doing, it's playing a higher sound. So if I go up like this, it's going higher and higher. That was the name of a song from Milk and Sugar from Germany, higher and higher. <laughs> okay, uh, and we can go down. All right, but that's not what we want, right? So let's go back to the main pitch, to the main note, that's the C here, okay? Good. And let's go to, why don't we jump to pan? That's the panning if the sound is left or right. If you don't hear this, maybe you have to use headphones to hear this. But if you have good speakers, two speakers, then you should hear it. Um, here it's on the left side and here it's on the right side. Or the opposite. Okay, let's go back in the middle because uh, we want to make something else. And we go to uh, step number two, the velocity. And most of the time, the velocity is how loud you hear the sound, okay? And if we, yeah, we can go like this. Yeah, I click with the mouse and while I hold down the mouse, I go up like this. So you hear exactly what it's doing, the volume of the sound. I want to be all hi-hats with very low volume, like this. Very low velocity, and that means very soft. Uh, it's very soft, but uh, that's okay for now. And every third sixteenth means, means again the off beast beats. Uh, so one, two, three, like we had before when we set the hi-hat, not on every sixteen just on every third 16. Huh? That's one, two, three. Here in this gray area, uh, or here in the upper corner, it's red. One, two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And now, 
we have again this off beats. But what do we do with the other hi-hats? Well, why don't we get a little bit creative and make them with a little bit random different velocities like this. I like it like this. And to be more creative, why go we do, go to pan and make also here a little random like this. Oh, sorry. Okay, that looks cool. But the offbeat that has the most velocity, remember here, huh? the velocity on every third 16 was very full in the volume. I want to hear in the middle. So one, two, three, this one here should be in the middle. Again here, one, two, three, yes, it's fine. One, two, three, also this is fine. One, two, three in the middle. Okay. Sorry, that's the not the perfect one, this one here. Okay. So the important beats are in the middle, uh, the others are somewhere just around the corner. Also a nice song, right? From the 80s. <laughs> okay. So if you are able now to hear this beat on your computer, not in the tutorial, that would be easy, but if you hear it on your computer because you reprogrammed the speed in FL Studio, I say congratulations. You programmed your very first beat right now. In the next episode, I will show you how to make a small arrangement in which we work with different MIDI instruments, uh, that means sound generators. In the description of this video, you will find a link to a YouTube playlist with all my videos uh, to FL Studio 21. My name is Thomas Foster. I'm a music producer from Austria. Uh, I'm sure you can hear that from my accent. If you have any questions, you are welcome to write them in the comments. And I would be happy if you support my channel by clicking the like button, leaving a comment and or a subscription, which would also have the advantage that you don't miss another episode. We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugent Player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session, so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugen, to make music.